The amount of cool things I will be able to make with just this one tool, this laser cutter and engraver is just, I'm so excited. I can make things with my art on it. I can make things for my art and I can make things for my business. But here's the thing. I'm not trying to move away from being an art business into a laser cutting, engraving, wood type business. I need this to just support what I already do as an artist. That's what this video is about. I'm gonna try a whole bunch of different things to see which ones are worth my time and effort as an artist. The claim is that this is easy to use and newbie friendly. So before we get to the projects, we gotta find out if that's true. This is the S1 20 watt laser cutter and engraver from Xtool that they graciously sent me to try out and which they made super convenient because almost everything is already set up. It came with the needed tools and a nice simple picture instruction book. So basically all I had to do was remove a few screws, stickers, attach the laser and the vent hose and plug in the power supply. Also super easy to connect the air assist and place the honeycomb panel inside the machine. They also sent some sample materials like marking paper for engraving on glass, laserable PU faux leather, a sheet of plywood and black acrylic, metal jewelry, and a square rock coaster. All that's left is to connect it to my computer and download and install Xtool Creative Space or the third party software Lightburn. I went with the more beginner friendly software, Xtool Creative Space, and I'm happy to report that it has been no problem to navigate. I won't be going into detail about using it, so definitely check out any of the mini tutorials online to get a feel for using the program if you'd like. Since I was scared of wasting the materials, I first made a material test grid on a random piece of cardboard to help me determine the best power and speed settings for the material. Even my first attempt with just typing my name out into the program and having the machine cut it did so well. So I tried adding my own artwork and they too came out nearly perfect. Seeing my favorite little moth drawing cut out like this, that's when I became officially hooked. Getting into the products, I was mostly excited about creating wooden pins, keychains, and magnets. While I've had enamel pins manufactured before, I also personally love having the ability to make my own products, mostly because it means less risk when I launch a new design. But I know that each small business owner, crafter, and artist has their own level of how much DIYing they want to do with their products. So in this video, I'm doing my best to show a variety of little to very time consuming products, as well as a variety of different products that will work for different art styles. Have you ever picked up a rock and it felt really satisfying to hold? That's how holding these feels too. Anyways, the engraved one is already looking pretty good. It just needs a few adjustments. But for this one, I actually wanted to put the image on there. There are companies where you can get this done and I'm pretty sure they're using a special printer to be able to print directly onto the wood. I don't have that. So instead I came up with two different ideas that might work. The first one is using DTF transfers and you would just heat press the image onto the wood. And the second is using tattoo paper. And obviously that's what we're gonna to try to use today. So I have some pin backs and I'm just going to attach them using industrial strength adhesive, E6000. I also wanna try making some key rings. So I grabbed some lobster clasps and split rings. After putting the image on there using the tattoo paper, it definitely is gonna need a seal. So I grabbed some Mod Podge Dimensional Magic to try out. I also have these self-adhesive magnetic coins that I could stick to the back of it and turn it into a little magnet. So I mirrored my design and printed it to the same size of my wood cutout. In the future, I'll use my Cricut vinyl cutter to print and cut the design to the perfect size so I don't have to worry about hand cutting it. I say this because I didn't think about how a layer of film would stay behind with the ink so because I didn't cut my design smaller than the wood I had that film hanging past the edges but you get the point just ignore that little mishap and by the way the s1 can also cut out paper I also need to get some needle nose pliers because these ones are obviously too big but anyways I just followed the tattoo paper instructions then attached the clasp and then finally brought out the dimensional magic I chose this stuff as an alternative to UV resin but I think I'll do some research to see if there's any better options still Nevertheless, I think it turned out pretty good. This could be a really great option if you have an art style that doesn't work for engraving, or if you're like me and you just want your product to have color. And then here's a look at the engraved pin that I made. It was super easy to add the pin backs to it and I absolutely love it. I, this is definitely something I'm adding to my store. With this other little test engraved cutout, I stuck a magnet to the back of it and threw it up on my refrigerator to see how it looks. So that's another little easy idea that I love. The next product I tried out was a bookmark. I absolutely loved how it turned out and I know many people like wooden bookmarks, but because I personally prefer thinner bookmarks, I decided to pull out the laserable PU, which I believe is another way of saying laserable faux leather or leatherette and gave it a try. It's important to note that not all faux leather is safe to laser cut because of the fumes. The first one I made was the original image, the same one that I used for the wood cut, but the second one is with the inverted toggle switch on and that one is my favorite. So I might just have to add faux leather bookmarks to my store. The third product I believe is called a plant steak. And the way I made it, it's just kind of decor that you add to your potted plants. I think it's adorable and it's super easy to make. So this is another one that I am highly considering adding to my shop. 
Now the fourth product is one that I've always wanted to sell, but because you kind of need to get a bunch of them to make the profit margin worth it, I never took the risk to invest in them. But now maybe I'll just make them myself. And that product is notebooks. Like with the keychain, I decided to try both an engraved version and a version with the tattoo paper. I also wanted there to be a cutout on the engraved version, so it did take a little more time in Photoshop to set the file up for everything that I wanted. Just to be honest here, I'm not someone that's very good at working with Illustrator and vector type files. I don't have a lot of experience with that, so a lot of this I am just doing with Photoshop. But preferably when you're working with a laser machine, you want to be using SVGs and vector type files. I also print and cut the background on some cardstock to add some color. And then I just grabbed two old notebooks that I already had to do this test. But binding machines are not too expensive if you're really interested in making notebooks. I'm considering purchasing one myself in the future so that I can make notebooks like this. I also think it'd be really cool to make my own personalized sketchbooks with whatever type of paper I like. I could even add watercolor paper to it. So far, the notebooks are the things that have taken the longest to make, but it's only because of setting up the file, which is really just a one-time thing. So with a binding machine, I really don't think it would take long to make these notebooks at all. On this one with the tattoo paper, I put a few layers of Mod Podge over top of it, and the paper is definitely not going to come off and it's very scratch resistant. But I think in the future I might try something like polyurethane on top of it. I really love both of these, I think for the engraved one I'll do it a little darker or add stain on top of it next time. Then I pulled out the black acrylic to try a popular product, earrings. This is one of those that I think I'd personally love to sell at craft fairs and markets. I didn't buy all the hardware and stuff for the earrings, but I did want to test out and show you the acrylic because all the other products I'm making are wood. Another quick little tip, you can use something like Gorilla Tape to help remove those tiny pieces out of the masking paper. Another thing to note is that diode lasers like this one can only handle opaque acrylic colors, not clear. I still need to make a few tweaks, but it looks pretty good. Next up, I made a game. I was between making a chess, checkers, or tic-tac-toe game, but then I remembered I had this little bee that I drew, and I thought it would be a perfect design for tic-tac-toe. This project was a little more involved since it required gluing pieces together, but it was still super easy, and I was able to set up the entire file in Xtool Creative Space in about 10 minutes. Y'all let me know what you think about this one because I love it, but I gotta admit I've never bought a tic-tac-toe game, so I don't know how many people out there would also love this. A trick I used here to get some of the scorch marks off from the laser was rubbing isoprofen alcohol on the wood and letting it dry. To put everything together I just used some old wood glue that I had laying around and then I also decided to go ahead and paint the pieces just a little bit with acrylic paint. It didn't take too much time and I think it really does add to the project to make it stand out from other ones. Painting is definitely something to consider with these products because a lot of people who have laser machines aren't going to put that extra 10% effort into doing that. So with that we've come to the end of the things I was able to make in a few days but it is not the end of my product idea list. So I'm going to quickly run through some some of the other things that I think would make great products for small businesses, artists, and crafters. I've really only scratched the surface so far. So number one, ornaments. Great for the holiday season. Number two, garlands. Number three, coasters. Number four, mirrors. And yes, you actually can engrave on mirror. Number five, puzzles. Number six, patches. Number seven, boxes. I haven't mentioned it much, but you can make movable and 3D and very useful things. Number eight, bookends or just any kind of desk decor. Number nine, clocks. Number 10, cups. As I mentioned, you can engrave on glass, but you also can engrave on tumblers like the Stanley Cup. You'll just need the additional rotary attachment to be able to do that. Number 11, phone cases. Number 12, custom engraved pencils. Number 13, sun catchers. Number 14, lights or lampshades. Number 15, hair clips. Number 16, shelves. Number 17, perpetual calendars. Number 18, phone holders. Number 19, engraved cutting boards. And number 20, a door topper, or really just any kind of wall decor you can imagine. And as a bonus, people love personalization, so that's always something to consider if you want. Now, if you're looking for any more ideas or you need some tips, some how-tos, free files, whatever, definitely check out the Xtool community online and the Facebook groups you see here. This community is fantastic and has already answered so many of my questions. Besides making products that I can put my art onto, I also want to use this to make artwork. And one of the main things I'm excited about is being able to make custom cradled wood panels. I made this custom panel a couple months ago. It took me all day because I used a jigsaw and sawing, but if I had had a laser cutter, it would have only taken me a few minutes to put the file together and I could have made it cradled instead of having to use a super thick board. And I just love that because it's going to save me a ton of time on my custom wood panels. As a little experiment to show y'all, I cut and engraved this old painting of mine on some birch wood and then painted it with gouache. I didn't seal or prime this by the way, but I would definitely recommend doing that, especially with paints like gouache and watercolor. Because of the engraving on it, I really didn't have to do much shading or highlights with the paint, so I made this in about 30 minutes. But that's not really the point. 
I've mostly been talking about putting art on products, so now I want to try and spark a little creativity in your mind because there's nothing like a good tool in the hands of a creative person. I'm so excited for more artists to have laser machines because I can't wait to see what projects and art pieces y'all make with it. Now since I'm new to wood art and just started looking at these, I've already been so amazed by some of the pieces I've seen. For example, and these are just for inspiration, again please don't copy people's art, I found someone named Martin Tomsky who makes some of the most detailed and beautiful layered wood pieces. These are so cool, I want one of them so bad. And I also found Paige, the maker behind Nebula Creations Co, and she makes these stunning mixed media, layered wood and paper artwork. Like I have no need for a flying whale ship mobile, but man I wish I did. I've learned about inlay woodcraft, which like, are you kidding me? These are amazing. And also intarsia, it's so cool. While, like I said before, I don't want to move into wood crafts, I would love to make some art that combines my love of painting with some of these styles like the intarsia or the layered wood pieces, something that would feel a little more unique and new to me. I just love the idea of breaking out of a square canvas to see what else can be made. Another thing I mentioned is being able to make stuff for my business. So for example, I have these jewelry boxes that I got and I can actually engrave my logo on them if I want, which I'm going to try now. So packaging, another way this laser machine can be used. Engraving on boxes like I'm doing here, product tags, cutting out custom paper boxes, or engraving bags are all options. Oh and yes, you can use a laser machine on fabric. I've even seen someone cut out their clothing patterns with a laser cutter. These ideas are best for small batches or when you're in a rush, like maybe last minute adding your logo to shopping bags for markets. I've also seen people make wood backing for their earrings to make it feel more professional and higher quality. Since I know how much a frame can affect the art piece, I thought custom matching frames might be a fun thing to add as an option to my shop when people are purchasing art prints. So I found designs in the public domain to try and first made this magnetic hanging poster holder. I've never seen an engraved one of these, so I'm happy with how well it turned out. The second one is just an engraved frame made from a back piece, some spacers, and then a top layer all glued together. But then I painted it a matching green color to the artwork and sanded the top layer to get the wood color back. Another great idea to help your business is stamps. You can laser engrave your own custom rubber stamps with this. Or maybe you need some shelves. This is something I'll be doing in the future so that I can have fun ways to store my art supplies. And of course custom signs. I hope to start selling at art markets this year so I can't wait to make my own professional looking signs as well as display stands. I still feel like there's so many more things I could say, so many more ideas to share, but I just want to close out by saying thank you for watching and thank you to Xtool because I had absolutely no idea how much I would enjoy being a laser machine owner. I'm so glad the S1 has a class 1 safety rating because it means it's safe for everyday crafters and inexperienced makers like myself. And also, I'm glad it looks great in my office. I'm so excited to be creating new things with this and if you have one, I would love to see what you create too. Until next time.